stick around because today we are pitting Simplify 3D against Cura. They're going head to head. Stay tuned. Hey, welcome to the first layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I'm your host here three times a week where we talk about the world of 3D printing. And today is no different because today we are going head to head Cura 3.4.1 versus Simplify 3D. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to open up both programs. We're going to head over to the computer in just a few minutes and we're going to bring up both programs. We're going to slice the same model with the same settings. We're going to compare the times that they give us. We're then going to print off both of those models and we're going to show you the results. Okay, so now we've got our Benchy loaded. We're using Ben the Benchy. This can be found on Thingiverse. We'll leave a, a link down below. This is supposed to be Ben the floating Benchy, but I've never had it able to float. So maybe I'm doing something wrong. So here it is, loaded into Simplify 3D, and let's just go through the settings first, and then we will enlarge it. So if we go up to our process, we'll just double click our process, bring that over, and um, we are going to utilize this as PLA. We're going to be on medium settings, so when we go to our layer height, we are at 2, 0.2 millimeters, so it's a fairly coarse uh, layer height. Um, we're going to do three, three top layers, three bottom layers, uh, and two walls. Now our, we are going to go from the outs, inside out. Um, we're not going to worry about printing any islands. We're not going to optimize anything. What we are going to do though is we are going to make our layer height, in this case 150, and you guys have seen me do this a lot. We're going to make our layer width 105 so we get good bed adhesion. Um, now we are looking at uh, our additions. In this case, we're going to use a skirt, and it's one layer. It's going to be four millimeters off of the, the benchy, and we are uh, using two outlines. Our infill is rectilinear. I could go grid, and I believe I am going to go grid here. Uh, so we are using a grid. We're only going to do this at 10%. Um, we don't need any support material for this. Our bed should be at 60. I printed this a little hotter at 210, so that could be part of the aberrations that we may see down the line. Uh, our cooling is fine. We don't have to worry about G-code scripts. Speed, we do. I want to leave this at 40 millimeters per second, and that's pretty much it. So we can go ahead and prepare this model for printing. Oh, we didn't. We have to go back. Wait a second. We didn't enlarge it. We want to make this 200% because then we'll get a nice big benchy out of it. And if we go over to our prepare to print, it's now going to prepare to print. Now, according to the timeline here, and you can see that right up here in the corner, according to the timeline, it is 6 hours 53 minutes. It's going to use 57.63 grams. Now, the material costs $2.65, not a big deal. Uh, I don't think I've set the price for a kilogram of kilogram spools yet, but um, here's where this build time is actually out of sync. So when you build this, it's going to take six hours and 53 minutes according to the calculations in Simplify 3D. Now, I know from experience that this is not going to take six hours and 53 minutes. It's actually going to be closer to about eight or nine hours uh, to print this Benchy. So we're going to save that toolpath to disk. We're going to send it off to the CR10 and we will print this one in black. Okay, so here we are with Ben, the floating benchmark once again in Cura 3.4.1. We've loaded in our model. It is... Uh, sitting there. We can see some of the things that it's it's calling overhangs and it may want us to do those overhangs um, but we don't have to worry about that. This is uh, just a benchmark. Let's start going into quality. 
So we know that in the case of Cura, we are going to be printing at draft quality. So their draft quality is 0.2. Our initial layer height is going to be 0.3, just like we did in Simplify 3D. Our line width is 0.4, which is the width of our nozzle. And down here, uh, we've changed our initial layer width to 105%. So that's going to give us a little bit more squish. Now let's go into the shells. And in this case, our wall thickness is 0.8 or wall line count of two. You guys have seen me do this before where you can multiply um, how many walls you want by 0.4. Uh, so if you change this, let's just say to 1.2, you're gonna see that this number down below the line, wall line count has changed to three. So if we go back to, I'll just take that out of there, 0 0.2. Pardon me. We want two. So that should be 0 0.8. You'll see that we have two lines. Now, we can change this line count and this will gray out our wall thickness. But for the sake of today, we're going to leave it uh, the way that it is. You can see it's going to do a concentric pattern, uh, both on the top and the bottom. Um, everything is pretty much set the same way. We don't have to worry about any of the other things there. Now our infill, we are using grid. Our infill density is 10%, so this is pretty much set the same way that we did over in Simplify 3D. Uh, we want to look at our material now. We're printing at 210, and uh, we are printing our first layer at half of 40, or let's, we'll go to speed in a minute, but 210 and we've got our bed set to 60. So this is just our material. There we go. Let's uh, go to travel or speed now. And you can see we've set this down to 40 millimeters and um, we've enabled the acceleration control. So, um, and in this case, you don't need to enable the jerk control, which we, we are not going to do, but we are going to make sure that that acceleration control is um, set. And we're going to be at 500 now for our acceleration. Our travel, we don't have to do a whole lot now. We can leave that one alone. We can uh, go into the cooling. We want to make sure that we enable part cooling or print cooling in this case, and 100%. And this one is going to start at 0 0.3. So it's going to start a little bit higher than uh, what we're normally used to. Uh, support we have turned off. We don't need any support. Build plate adhesion. Um, we are using a skirt. Again, we're using a line count of two, and the skirt distance is four millimeters. So we don't have to do anything else there. Now, the rest of it, mesh mixes, special modes, that kind of stuff, we don't need to worry about. What we will do now is we will go ahead and we will cut this. So we're going to hit the prepare button, send it to our SD card. And this says it's only going to take one hour and 36 minutes. We obviously did something wrong because that's going to take a lot more than one hour. I know what we did wrong. Let's see if you guys can put that down in the comments below. We have to select our model. We have to scale our model to 200%. That's what we didn't do. So now our bench, you just got a whole lot bigger. And now we're going to hit prepare, and that should give us a more accurate reading. Seven hours, 17 uh, minutes. And I know that this is going to be about nine hours to print. So let's head over to... Uh, the desk and we will see the results. So the results are in. We have the two benches on the table right here. We've got the white one which was printed using Cura and the settings in which we showed you uh, that we used and this was done in similar or almost identical uh, settings in Simplify 3D and we did the white hat and the black hat. The white hat is free, the black hat costs you money. So let's take a closer look at our two models. Let's start with the uh, Kira model first. And it's not too bad. Let's start at the top here. You can see, maybe I come back and get a little bit better focus. There we go. Um, you can see that it did 
an interesting pattern on the infill here and we can see it clearly on the bottom or maybe not this camera's not picking it up very well you can see there um, there's a little bit of a, a difference when it comes to the bottom of the benchy and uh, this has been the benchy a couple of things we want to look for is let's start with the uh, text on the back that says ben and we know that this text is nice and crisp it is clean it's got really clean lines there's no ghosting if we move this around in the light there's no ghosting of the letters on either side uh, or up or down now we do have some layer aberrations here um, on these especially near the bottom we have more layer aberrations than i would like is this an acceptable torture test I think this is pretty acceptable. Our overhangs here on the top, you can see they worked out really well. Our stack came out really well. Um, the, the little bars uh, that hold people into the boat came out really well. And so did these portholes on the front where the anchor would go. Um, you can see that there's no ghosting around these either. So that's a definite plus. All right, let's move over to the black hat of the, of the uh, benches. Now we can see we've got a little bit of ghosting there. Can you see it? You can see it right about here. There's just a little bit of ghosting. Now these were both set to 40 millimeters per second on the benches. Um, there's no ghosting around the anchor hole but the anchor hole is not as clean and i can see that from here on the outside it's not as clean i'm just trying to tilt the light here so you guys can see it better not as clean um we did have a we had the issues that the white one had that had it at the bottom we started to have those near the top of the bow and that could be a couple of reasons on my part because i was running out of filament here uh, we have one line that's a little under extruded and we have um, a line where the uh, filament got snagged. Uh, but overall, uh, let's look at the back there. You can see Ben on the back, not quite as clean as the Ben on the white one, on uh, the Cura version. Now, Cura has done a really good job of, of doing uh, or redoing their software. Now that said, Simplify 3D, as I mentioned on Wednesday, is coming out with a brand new version of Simplify 3D, um, which will be an update available to all Simplify 3D users. Uh, we'll look at the top here. You can see the top did its standard back and forth, back and forth. And same with the bottom here. You can see that it had a nice flat surface. So both of these benches were printed on CR10s. And both of these uh, particular models were sliced almost equally across the board. So there you have it. There's the two results. Which is better? Well, it depends. Um, do you want a piece of software that has complete com customi customized settings? Or do you want some of those settings taken care of automatically? Cura um, has now expanded the way that they do things, and you guys saw that in the video, and I've talked about Cura many times before. Um, with Simplify 3D's new version, uh, we're going to see whether it's uh, better than the latest version of Cura. If I was buying a 3D printer today, I would probably download the latest version of Cura just to use that software. Um, because it is so customizable at this point. The one downfall that they still have is a support issue. Um, yes, they've incorporated tree supports. We, we are gonna do a whole separate video on tree supports down the line, but we'd like to see a little bit more customization um, from Cura in terms of the support material in which it uh, generates for you so that you can add and subtract and that kind of thing. Well, there you go. The results speak for themselves. You decide on which one you want to try. I'm a Simplify 3D user. I use it all the time. Uh, I only use Cure for you guys, actually. 
but I use Simplify 3D. It is my slicer of choice. It gives me the most flexibility when I am 3D printing a new model. Uh, I find that it works better than most of the free options out there. And it is, it does come with a fairly steep uh, price tag. So it's $150 US. Uh, sometimes you can find it on sale, uh, but go ahead and check it out today. I'm going to leave links to both of the these um, slicers down in the description below, so you guys can make up your own your own mind on which one you'd like to use uh, for your further printing projects. All right, so that brings us to the end of our comparison. So what I want to do is first and foremost thank my great staff here, and of course it's always Brian Baker. Frank Awesome, the lovely Jess Corniching, who is behind the controls today, my lovely wife Geraldine, and you guys for joining us here on the show. Listen, if you're new to the show and you got something out of today's episode, then please consider hitting that subscribe button, ding that little bell, and give us a thumbs up down in the comments below. And if you've got some comments or you have some questions, you can always leave them down below or you can email me at richard at the first layer dot com and I will be happy to respond to your email. Uh, I do try and check the comments as often as possible and try and get back to people as best I can. Now, if it's a question that's for a future episode, I'm going to save that and we'll tackle that in a future episode. So I want to also thank my Patreons for sticking with me through all the ups and downs that we've been having on Patreon lately. And uh, we are continuing with our series. We've got a big build series coming up pretty soon just for our Patreon users. And uh, then uh, after that, we'll release it to YouTube. Uh, Brian Baker and I are getting together to build a brand new um, printer, actually. Uh, and it's going to be big. Uh, that being said, if you want to become a Patreon and show your support for the show, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash the first layer and uh, sign up for one of the uh, levels there. Now, if you're not interested in a monthly commitment, and I understand times are tough, please, by all means, go and check out Buy Me A Coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash the first layer. There you can buy me a coffee, Jess a coffee, Frank a coffee, Brian a coffee, my wife a coffee. You can buy us all coffee. coffee Everybody, everybody's got coffee. Uh, but we love coffee around here. And all that money goes into the same pool to help us upgrade the equipment and bring you guys a much better experience. So with that said, thanks for tuning in today. I want to thank Spool 3D because they give us this wonderful space. And, of course, the space uh, that they give us allows us to bring you guys head-to-heads uh, and show off new printers and new products that uh, come into the store from time to time. Remember to print it right, print it with spool3d.ca. They've got everything that you need from printers to filaments and all the parts and accessories that you could need for your next upgrade or printer custom build. So check them out today at spool3d.ca. Print it right, print it with spool3d. Now, at the end of the show, if you guys want to send me something to show on the show, you can do so by sending it to Richard at the first layer, um, or you can send it to our address, which is linked down in the description below. So go check that out. If you're a company and you want to uh, have your product shown on the show, you can do so by uh, sending it to that address down below. Uh, on that note, I'm going to get out of here for today, and I'm going to go and relax for the weekend. Again, my name is Richard Cleveland. I'm glad to have you with me. Make sure that you love somebody today and say something nice to somebody that you don't even know. How's that? And remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. Take care.